happy new year. I hope that you had a wonderful 2022 and that 2023 will be even better for you. Today, I wanna talk about how I'm gonna try to be a healthier vegan in 2023, as well as share some tips for you and stick around for a bonus recipe. I've been vegan now for well over seven years and when I first went vegan, it was because I wanted to help the animals and not consume animal products or pay for products that contribute to animal suffering. And when I first went vegan, since I was cutting out meat and milk and eggs, all those products, all I was really left with were vegetables, fruits, legumes, and whole grains because that's all I knew that I could eat on a vegan diet. And although it was challenging at first to adjust my taste buds and change the way I was eating, I felt really good. I lost weight, um, I stopped getting urinary tract infections, even my hair and my nails started growing longer and stronger. However, it wasn't long before I started discovering vegan fast food and vegan junk foods. These included things such as vegan burger patties, vegan chicken fingers, <laughs> vegan sausages, vegan cheeses at the store, vegan cookies. And while these vegan products are great transition foods to help people who are transitioning away from a standard American diet towards more of a vegan lifestyle and cutting down on animal products. I think they're great for that. However, long term, they were not very great for me and my partner. So my goal for 2023 is, like I said, to become a healthier vegan and to get back into the shape that I wanna be in and have more energy so that I can be a good role model and example for others who are thinking about going vegan but they're not sure if it's healthy. I wanna show them that yes, you definitely can be healthy as a vegan long term and I wanna show people how to do it. So I've got five tips for you to become a healthier vegan in 2023 or a healthy vegan if you're not vegan yet. Tip number one is to not cook with oil. Try to cut out oil from your diet as much as possible because oil is basically pure fat calories. There are about 4,000 calories per pound of oil, even a tablespoon of oil in your food per day. Over the course of a month, it adds up to about a pound worth of fat. Now don't quote me on that. This is from what I remember from Dylan's video from Well Your World. I'll link his video down below. The net result is even if you think you're only using a tiny bit of oil or coconut oil or olive oil and you think that these are more healthy, they're really not very good for you. I try to avoid cooking with oil at home as much as possible. You can saute food using a little bit of water or vegetable broth. There's a lot of cooking methods that don't require you to use oil. Comment below if you want me to make future videos on oil-free cooking hacks. I would be happy to do that. The next tip is to stick to three main food groups that are low calorie density. So again, shout out to Dylan at Well Your World. He really breaks this down into detail, but I'm gonna try to sum it up for you here. There are certain food groups that have lower calorie density, meaning that they have fewer calories per pound of food versus other food groups that have a lot more calories per pound of food. So let's say if you were to eat a pound of broccoli, that's gonna have a lot less calories than if you were to eat a pound of steak or if you were to eat a pound of vegan ice cream or bread. What happens is that if you are filling up on higher calorie density foods, you're gonna intake more calories to feel the same amount of fullness in your stomach versus if you eat lower calorie density foods, you'll be able to eat more volume of food and feel full, but not in just so many calories. So your first food group that you wanna make sure you are incorporating is your non-starchy vegetables. These are things such as broccoli, cauliflower, zucchini, green beans, salad greens, bell peppers, any of these non-starchy vegetables are gonna have on average around 100 calories per pound, and you should definitely be eating these every day. Not just because they're low calorie, but they also have a lot of nutrients and you don't want your body to miss out on those. The next food group you wanna be eating every day are fruits. So any kind of fruits you like, bananas, oranges, grapes, apples, strawberries, you name it, 
Fruits on average are gonna have around 300 calories per pound of food. These also all have a ton of nutrients as well that you wanna be eating. Next, you can kind of consider the next food group to be starches. It is broken down between complex carbs and legumes, but we'll just lump them together as starches. So this includes potatoes, brown rice, whole grain pasta, quinoa, beans, lentils. All of these are starchy foods. They're gonna have anywhere between 400 to 600 calories per pound. Now a big mistake that some people make when they try to go vegan is they only eat salads or they're only eating steamed vegetables all day. And while they're good for you, you're gonna want to have more to keep you satiated. So those starches will give you more energy throughout the day that's gonna release slowly. So you definitely wanna make sure you're having your starchy foods to fill you up on a vegan diet. By the way, disclaimer, I am not a doctor or a nutritionist. I have no nutrition certifications whatsoever. So take what I'm telling you with a grain of salt. Which brings me to my next topic, salt. Oh my gosh. Chefs will tell you that you should salt your food at every stage of cooking. And yes, if you want your food to taste its most optimal, delicious taste, you can do that. However, <laughs> um, I'm trying to be a healthier vegan in 2023, and I'm actually gonna be cutting back on salt usage when I'm cooking. Why? Two reasons. First, salt causes you to retain more water weight, so there's that. And then second, salt makes the food taste richer. So even if you did prepare a nice, healthy meal balanced with veggies and starches, if you're adding too much salt, it's gonna make the food taste more rich and more delicious, potentially causing you to overeat on that food. That's definitely an issue that I've had <laughs> in the past. Sometimes I'd be full and I'm like, oh, but it tastes so good. Let me just have a couple more bites. And that causes you to intake more calories than your body actually needs in order to get through each day. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that your food is gonna be completely bland and flavorless. I would not think that this would be a sustainable way of eating if my food didn't still taste pleasing to me. And so I'm gonna be exploring other flavor enhancers, lots of seasonings, things like lemon juice or vinegar to bring out the flavors of your food without necessarily adding more salt. Along the same veins, tip number four is to cut back on sugar, especially processed sugars. Natural sugars from fruits, those are fine because you are consuming the whole fruit along with fiber and water and whatever else the fruit naturally has in it. However, when you are just consuming straight up sugar, it's gonna mess with your blood sugar levels. It's gonna, like the salt, make your food taste richer and make you wanna eat more of it. <laughs> so I'm gonna really try to cut back on those. And I know I love me some pastries, some sweet desserts. But instead of having sugar, this tip goes hand in hand, is to choose fruit for dessert. And that has saved me so many times this week trying out this new uh, way of eating. Like I said, I tend to get late night sweet cravings. I would usually reach for some toast and jam or some chocolate chips or some candy that we had lying around. <laughs> when I get those cravings, now I will have some fruit instead, like some grapes or a banana. And that will usually help to satisfy that craving. And it's lower calorie than eating a pastry <laughs> or something at nine o'clock at night. Tip number five is don't drink your calories. Now this one, I feel like it's not gonna be too difficult for me. I'm already used to drinking water throughout the day. We rarely buy juices. We do have plant-based milks in the fridge that I use sometimes, but I'm gonna cut back on how many of those I buy. Something that kind of surprised me in my research was that fruit smoothies can actually contain a lot of calories and it's different from eating the whole fruit because when you're chewing, you're kind of consuming it slower and it gives your body time to send you that signal of when you're full and to stop. But if you are blending up the fruit and you're just drinking it from a smoothie, you're consuming it so fast, like your body doesn't have time to tell you, hey, you can stop drinking this now. Unless you sip on it really slowly, you could do that. But if you avoid drinking your calories, that's 
one less source of calories you're getting and you are staying hydrated with lots of water instead. Bonus tip is to set up your environment for success. So if you still have any vegan junk food lying around, depending on how strict you wanna go with this, you could either just straight up get rid of it or give it to someone else who wants that product. Or at the very least, I would say put them in harder to reach places like your cabinets that are above your fridge that you never go into. You know, for like if somebody comes over and you wanna have a little something something, that's fine. I'm not saying you can never have vegan junk food again. I know I'm probably still gonna have some every now and then on the weekends maybe. But my goal is at least to follow these health tips at least five days a week. So during the week, uh, I gotta have all that junk food out of sight, out of mind, and have some really easy go-to meals that you can whip up that's not gonna take long, that's gonna be faster than you ordering DoorDash or going to a drive-thru because when it's after work and you're tired, I get it. You wanna eat something fast because you're hungry. So we gotta make eating healthy something that's easy and sustainable. So I actually bought an Instant Pot <laughs> this year and I am excited to try out some new Instant Pot recipes. Comment below if you wanna see some Instant Pot recipes as well. For now, let's get into the kitchen. I'll show you an example of um, a dinner that I am having with this healthier vegan lifestyle. Today we're gonna make a very simple starch blaster and this recipe was inspired by Well Your World, link in the description below. I have a cup and a half of just mixed legumes. These is, this is a 10 soup mix. There's um, black eyed peas in here, green lentils, uh, green split peas, red lentils, just a nice mixture of legumes. So you wanna make sure you kinda comb through it and check that there's no little pebbles or rocks in there. And then just give these a rinse and put them in the Instant Pot. I'm also gonna add one cup of dry quinoa. I'm also adding a few baby carrots that I have on hand one can of tomato sauce. Now if you can find tomato sauce that is salt free, that is even better. I'm gonna season it generously with some nutritional yeast, plenty of garlic powder, oregano, basil, and some crushed red pepper. If you have any onion powder, I would recommend that, but I ran out. Now I'm just gonna add water enough to cover everything fully, and I want about an extra half inch of water on top. So I'm thinking I might need about three cups total of water. Yep, that's three cups. And just give it a good stir. Now we're gonna put the lid on our Instant Pot and the easiest way to do this is if you line up the large part on the back on the left side and then you just turn it, boom, and it's closed. Now I'm just gonna hit pressure cook. I'm gonna make sure it's on high pressure and then I'm going to cook this for about 20 minutes to make sure that those beans get cooked. And then you just leave it like that and it'll beep on its own. Okay, and now it's on, so it's gonna start heating up. The pin will pop up to the top when it is fully pressurized and from there it's gonna cook for 21 minutes and then we can do a quick release of all the pressure and then it'll be done. In the meantime, while our starch blaster is cooking in the Instant Pot, I'm going to air fry some frozen broccoli. I'm just gonna toss it all in the air fryer basket. You don't have to thaw it at all, okay? Now I usually do 380 degrees 
for five minutes, shake it, and then five minutes again. Our broccoli is done air frying now. Perfectly cooked. Just gonna put all of that onto our plate. And now I usually just eat this with some freshly cracked black pepper on top. Sometimes we'll eat it with a little bit of low sodium soy sauce, just dotted on top. But um, yeah, I'll eat about half of this broccoli before having the starch blaster. And this will help to fill me up a little bit. All right, our starch blaster is done cooking. Now we are going to vent it to let all of that pressure come out. So I'm still new at this. I'm a little paranoid. I'm gonna be using a glove, which you really don't need to, but here we go. Once that pin drops, we are ready to go. So I'm just gonna hit cancel to turn this off and then very carefully turn the lid to the left and you can set it right there on the side just like that you're probably going to want to serve this on a plate instead of a bowl that's my preference it just helps it to cool off faster and i'm going to just stir everything in here first before i serve it Let's see what we got here I know it doesn't look real fancy, okay? If you want, you could put some uh, some black pepper on top or just a little uh, sprinkle of salt at the end if you want. Go on it, because it's hot. nice earthy grains in there you got the little bit of Italian seasoning and the tomato sauce this will definitely keep you full mm -hmm. simple real real simple and wholesome I've got some nice red grapes here. These are called the candy hearts variety. You can find them where you live. They're the best I've had. So again, choosing fruit for dessert. Once I'm done with my starch blaster, if I get a late night sweet craving, this is what I'm gonna reach for. Or some pears or some cuties, some mandarin oranges, banana. This is part of setting up your environment for success is making these foods easily accessible make it look vibrant and appealing and um, that's about it let me lift up that lid okay